There are many ways to find the area of a triangle. There's one half base times height, one half AB sine C, RS, and ABC over 4R. All of these theorems have nice proofs requiring only a few lines of algebra. But what if you want to define the area with only the side lengths? Heron's formula uses the three side lengths of a triangle to find its area. The formula is given by the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c, where s is the semi-perimeter of the triangle, or a plus b plus c all over 2. The traditional Heron's proof is more complicated. It uses the formula 1 half a b sine c and gradually substitutes in the side lengths for the unknown variables. However, these solutions take many lines of messy algebra and no one wants to plow through them because they're bashy and most importantly, easy to make mistakes on. However, taking a step back, we notice that the simplest form of Heron's formula has the semi-perimeter of a triangle in it, and we can utilize this property to our advantage. Notice first in our list of area formulas that there is one formula with s in it, a equals rs. That means we should be looking for properties to do with in circles. So let's draw our triangle with a circle inscribed in it. Let's label the vertices and the side lengths a, b, and c. The first thing we can do is drop in the lengths of the tangents because finding out the lengths is always useful. But how do we do that? First, let's clear out the labels for the vertices clear out the radii, and move the side lengths a bit further to make our diagram neater. Let's label each of these tangents as x, y, and z. Since two tangents to a circle from the same point are equal in length, both of the tangents coming from a are of length x, from b are from length y, and from c are of length z. From bc, we have the equation y plus z equals a, and we can find similar equations from a, b, and b, c. And since by adding the equations together, 2x plus 2y plus 2z equals the perimeter, simplifying, we get x plus y plus z equals s. And since y plus z equals a, x plus a is s, and x equals s minus a. And we can find similar equations from a, b, and a, c. We can deduce y to be s minus b, and z to be s minus c. But look here, s minus a, s minus b, and s minus c all appear in the formula for herons. We have everything in place. We use the lengths of the tangents to find s minus a, s minus b, and s minus c, and we can use the area and in radius somehow to find s. Let's connect the in center with the tangent points and the vertices of the triangle. We can start off with the side BC, since that gives us S minus B and S minus C, two of the terms in our product. We need to find some way to include the S minus A term and S term. The S minus A term is the most complex, so let's somehow move that length down. We can't just move a tangent down because that won't tell us anything about the area, but what we can do is draw a similar triangle that includes the radius and S minus A and then we can just use that to get s. Let's label the rest of the important points. Construct triangle BCH such that it is similar to AEI. We're picking this triangle because we basically know all the side lengths of AEI, and we know BC. By similar triangles, we could easily find the exact position of H. We know by similar triangles, H over A equals R over S minus A. Rearranging, we find that h equals ra over s minus a. Now if we connect i and h and label the point of intersection with bc as g, we have two similar triangles, idg and hcg. From similar triangles, cg over dg is equal to ch over di, which is ra over s minus a all over r, which then simplifies to a over s minus a. Look what happens when we add 1 to both sides. Since CG plus DG equals CD, and A plus S minus A equals S, we have CD over DG equals S over S minus A. We also know CD equals S minus C, 
so we can solve for dg. dg equals s minus a times s minus c over s. Just by adding 1, we found a length with three of the four terms found in Harrods. Now, we'll need to find the last one, s minus b. Since bd equals s minus b, we'll want to consider looking at something relating to the triangle big. We already know what bd and dg are, if only there was a way to relate these lengths to the altitude of BIG, or the radius of the incircle. It would be really handy if angle BIG turned out to be right, and, in fact, it is. To see why, let's review one property of circles. In a quadrilateral, if the two opposite angles add up to 180 degrees, then that quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle. We won't go too deeply into the proof here, but the angles in a cyclic quadrilateral are the keys to solving this. Also, if we connect the diagonals of the quadrilateral, the two angles that look at that arc are equal. To see this, let's just focus on those two angles. They're looking at the same arc, which is equal to the angle formed with the center of the circle. Since the inscribed angle is one half of the angle in the center, they are both equal. Now back to the problem. Since we constructed BCH as similar to AEI, we know two of the angles already. CBH equals A over 2, and BCH is a right angle. Also, since the in-center lies on the angle bisectors, IBD equals B over 2, and ICD equals C over 2. If we add all them together, angle IBH plus angle ICH equals 90, plus a plus b plus c over 2, which, if you notice that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180, is 90 plus 180 over 2, or just 180, which means that b i c h is cyclic. And since b c h is 90 degrees, b i g is 90 degrees too, since they are both looking at the same arc of the circle. Now, we have all the angles in triangle b i g. So we have BD equals S minus B and DG equals S minus A times S minus C over S and ID equals R. How shall we proceed? Well, right triangles have the property that if you drop an altitude to the hypotenuse from that right angle, it forms two right triangles that are similar to each other and the big triangle. And that property can be shown with just a little bit of angle chasing. Anyways, since the two triangles are similar, we can write out this ratio between the side lengths. The altitude h in this triangle is the square root of ab. Using that formula, we can find r. r equals the square root of s minus a times s minus b times s minus c over s. And we're basically done. Since a equals rs, just by multiplying by s, we're finally left with Heron's formula. And that's the proof. All we used were similar triangles and cyclic quadrilaterals. We didn't need to plow through 20 lines of messy algebra. We just used some basic geometry skills. Heron's formula can be used to find the area of any triangle if you know its side lengths. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so. I will see you in the next one.